Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Rodolfo and as April said, I'm a PhD student at the University Laval and today I'm going to present my research project focused on developing a new accelerate method for evaluating, evaluating of the sulfate bearing aggregates. So for today, we will, we will have this outline and now I'm going to start to speak uh, about what are those iron sulfate minerals that are affecting our concrete structures. So the iron sulfates are minerals that can be found in different types of rocks and are composite mainly for iron and sulfur. These can be like in a golden color, yellow with, with yellowish color. And when the rock is crushed, it can be on the, on the aggregate. And with, with water and oxygen can be oxidized and this is what we found in the in the quarry of Trois Rivières in Quebec City, Canada. Those uh, iron sulfates, uh, when they are present in in concrete, we call them as a sulfate bearing aggregates. And there is two main reactions that are happen at the moment when these uh, sulfate minerals can be found in concrete is an oxidation process and then an internal sulfate attack. But it's really important that we need to understand that if the oxidation process doesn't start, we will not develop the internal sulfate attack because the sulfur, it will be fixed with the, with the iron in the mineral. So these steps are going to pass and when the oxidation start, we will not be able to stop the internal sulfate attack. Once it start, it's sure that we are going to have the internal sulfate attack in concrete. So for understanding this, I will take some minutes to explain how the chemical reaction is happening uh, in concrete. So we have pyrotite that can be found in the concrete aggregates and will react with oxygen and water and will free the, the iron ions and also the sulfates. These iron ions will continue with oxygen and, and water and we, then it will transform to oxidizing products. But also those sulfates that were free in, in the system will transform to sulfuric acid and this sulfuric acid will attack the cement paste initially in the interstitial transition zone. And this sulfate attack will look for the calcium hydroxide, the portlandite, we transform to gypsum, and that gypsum will transform with the aluminum and water to ettringite. And if we have the condition of a lower temperature and a source of carbonate and sil silicium, we will can generate a thaumacite that we found in the Trois Rivières a case. This reaction will generate a big damage in our concrete infrastructure and the cracks are everywhere and sometimes uh, as we can see here the cracks are bigger than a, a marker. So this, this problem has been an issue for years in the city of Trois Rivières and the owners of the houses has to live up their own house because there were no solution for this problem at that moment. So they need to demolish and reconstruct the foundation. But our group uh, tried to understand what was happening in, in our concrete and take some blocks to monitoring the reaction and expansion of those blocks in, in different sites. And we found that some of the traces, traces of the, this reaction there are like a yellowish or orange color due to the oxidation of the parotide and also for the internal sulfate attack that is suffer the concrete. Uh, we notice also that the humidity can influence the reaction. And in some parts of the houses where there is not concrete that has been exposed, it can be less damaged than some parts of the houses that has a uh, water available. 
So with that, in 2010, uh, the PhD student from another PhD student from University Laval, Andrea Rodriguez, she developed a, proced a testing procedure for uh, evaluating the performance of the sulfate bearing aggregate. But this program was focusing in testing the aggregate itself, not the aggregate in a concrete environment. So there is a lot of preparation for the rock because it has to be a uh, crushing to obtain different size. So we can do a total sulfur content test an oxygen consumption test because we are, we are oxidizing the minerals. So the oxygen can be a, a, a key for, for this problem. And she developed an expansion test with a mortar bars. But as I say at the beginning, it's not in concrete aggregate size. So for the moment, we don't have any test as we can found the aggregate in the, in the foundation or inside. And my project was focused on, on trying to develop that test that can be quickly uh, determined if we are going to have problems with those minerals. And with all this background, I remember something for civil engineering. And this reaction is similar to what I found in the corrosion. So in corrosion, we have the electrochemical cell that is formed with a cathodic area and an anodic area where the iron is going to be free and will react with the oxygen and water and we create the rust. But I saw that when chlorides are present in our system, the, these chlorides will react with the iron and the iron will be free to the surface. And because those products are not stable, chloride will be free again and the iron will be free in the system with the water and oxygen. And this is a cycle that is, it will never stop. And the rust will continue and continue and continue. So with that, I, I take this background and I say, okay, I will develop my program. And I propose these uh, objectives that it was to understand the uh, effects of the humidity on the reaction to develop a new accelerate test to try to evaluate the performance of the sulfate bearing aggregates. And at the end, when the test has been done, uh, testing the, the concrete and evaluate the performance of the concrete once the oxidation and the internal sulfate attack has happened into the concrete specimens. So for that, I developed this methodology. So I create new concrete I, I mix new concrete in the lab and I propose two different uh, treatments to accelerate the reaction of the sulfate bearing aggregates. First one was an electrochemical treatment that is composed to two, two phases of the oxidation process. The first step is to activate the oxidation and the second step is to uh, accelerate that, uh, that oxidation that has been already uh, been activated. And then uh, I submit the, the concrete specimens to a wet and drying cycle and a water source so the, the reaction can be developed and the internal sulfate attack can increase. And after to evaluate the concrete properties. And also I have another treatment that is with a wet and drying cycle using uh, bleach as an oxidation, uh, oxidation solution. And in the bleach, the chemical formula is NaClO. So chloride are present. And I think that's why in the mortar bar, we are generated some expansion because the chloride is present in the, in the system. W using uh, for the testing a high temperature and low relative humidity, and then the same inter, uh, condition for generating uh, internal sulfate attack with lower temperature and high relative humidity. But today I'm going to focus only in the oxidation process because as I said at the beginning, it has to start the oxidation process to have the internal sulfate attack. And this can be taken a lot, a lot of time. In the field, we, we uh, 
understand that it takes around 10 to 15 years to start reacting. And also I will focus only in the electrochemical treatment that I propose for this experimentation, because we think that the, this approachment can be really uh, useful for evaluating the performance of the aggregates. So this is the new concrete that we make in the lab based on the work that uh, was made for Benoit Duran in Hydro Quebec. He makes some blocks and make an exposure site with uh, the aggregate that has been traveling in Trois Rivières city. And for me, I take three more not reactive aggregate to, to confirm that I don't generate something more in the concrete specimens. And one of them is the same mineralogy, mineralogy that the Maschimo uh, aggregate, that is the, the aggregate that has been used for the Trois Rivia situation. This Maschimo aggregate, we have two, two different uh, total for sulfur content. One is a super rich uh, total sulfur content, and the other one is just rich total sulfur content. So with that, I make the, the, my idea of an electrochemical treatment. The first thing is to penetrate chloride with, uh, in, into the concrete. So at some point, you migrate chloride into the concrete and it will pass the time and will continue the penetration of the concrete in the specimen until I reach all the specimen can be penetrated with uh, ions of chloride. So the chloride can be available to, to activate the oxidation of parotide. And then I continue apply some voltage. And with this voltage, I can accelerate or continue improving the oxidation of the parotide. We will dealing with some uh, things for this testing. And I'm going to present here four of the main aspects of the testing that have been uh, done at the University Laval. The first thing was the specimen size, because in the standard that we use, we know normally we, we use just a pocket of 50 millimeters of uh, length. So we started with uh, a, a sample of 100 millimeter length to see if we can penetrate chloride into the concrete. And after five days, I reached to penetrate all the 100 uh, millimeters. And I measure th this penetration of chloride just by a colorimetric uh, testing method by spraying silver nitrate into the specimen and the silver nitrate will react with the chloride and will create like a whitish color into the specimen. So I know how the chloride is advancing into the concrete. Then I try different uh, bolts, applying different bolt, bolts to the concrete. And the first thing that I do is to apply five more bolts that recommended for the standard to see if I can accelerate more this impregnation. And it doesn't, it doesn't work, it, it, I obtain the similar results. So I continue doing until I reach to the 12.5 volts that it was the ideal and not gener uh, generating a problems for the testing. But some new problems arrived because in the normal standard, we use a uh, metallic electrodes. All my electrodes were corroded and were damaged uh, because the chloride reached to the other side to the electromigration cell. So I need to propose a new el electrode made of graphite. And after 14 days, I, I don't have any problem with the system. I continue uh, developing the electromigration, electromigration cell configuration. And this is uh, how I start. As you see, it was not really good uh, configuration, a lot of leaking problems. And at the end, I achieved to have this this cell for, for the testing. And this is the results that I obtained just with a not reactive aggregate. After three days, I, I can penetrate that uh, length in the concrete, seven days and 10 days. And this is really important because as you see here, at seven, 
In 10 days, chloride has reached to the other side to the cell. And that's why the electrode was start corroding. The penetration of chloride is not linear. So I was dealing problems with that until I, I, I have the graphite electrodes. And this is after 14 days, the specimen was totally penetrated with chloride. I continue doing the test with a uh, super rich reactive aggregate. And after 14 days, the specimen starts showing oxidation and some cracks due to the reaction of the parotide uh, or the iron sulfate minerals. As I said at the beginning, the second step is continue with the voltage to see if I can accelerate the, the reaction. And this is the result. So the reaction continue and crack everything in, in the concrete. But the problem is that we can so clearly there is some damage in the concrete, but what to measure? What property is losing the concrete with this type of aggregate? So we tried different testings. We tried all of these testing to see in which one we can obtain some good results to evaluate the performance of these sulfate bearing aggregates. And this is the, my, the first result that I want to present is the expansion test. We, may, we install some uh, inserts in the, in, the, in the concrete specimens. And those inserts has to be in a fiberglass material because if I put some metals, it will be corroded at the same time. So I measure the expansion and we can see clearly here that within the time, more time in the electrochemical treatment, we will generate more expansion. The problem is like the, the variation of the results. And this is due to the variation of the parotide in the aggregate at the same time. Another interesting result is the ultra pulse velocity test. It's really, really interesting, but we think that maybe we, can, we will not be able to use this tool for evaluate the aggregate because it's we can see clearly that for a reactive aggregate, it descends the, the velocity. And for not reactive aggregate, it, it increases. But the value is, is so small that we, we will don't know if we have a lower quantity of total sulfur aggregate and we can see the same effect. So we continue doing the testing and the we think that the most promising uh, evaluation test for those aggregates is the modulus of elasticity. We can see it here after uh, within the time, the modulus of elasticity of the concrete was decreasing and it's because it's highly influenced by the performance of the aggregate. And when it start cracking, it will decrease in the modulus of, of elasticity. And this is the beginning, as we see here in a concrete plaque that I, cut and polish, some iron sulfates are clean, they are not react or maybe just a less reaction. And this is what's happening after the time. The pyrotide is activate and the cracks start uh, being uh, done into the aggregate and transferred to the paste. And I observe also rusted products in the, in the, in the cracks in concrete. I continue the testing with a not reactive aggregate, and this is the uh, modulus of elasticity, the potential modulus of elasticity of the mix design. And this is what is happening with the, with the electrochemical treatment for the sulfate bearing aggregate. So for confirming that the test is working and we are generating the right products, we go to the microscope and we found the rust products. In, in, in the concrete specimens. And as I say, if the oxidation start, the internal sulfate uh, attack, it will start at the same time because sulfur is available in the system. So we, we can find the etringite already after this uh, 35 days of, of testing. And I confirmed that the pores were clean in a non-reactive aggregate. 
with the zero percent of total sulfur content. So the conclusion of this is that the electrochemical treatment are inducing the iron sulfate oxidation process. Chloride ions are catalyzing the oxidation of parotide. Secondary products were found in the microscope or were confirmed with the microscope uh, techniques. And the modulus of elasticity is the most promising evaluation parameter for the sulfate bearing aggregates. And for our perspective, we need to continue testing more aggregates with different total sulfur content for uh, at the end, we will be able to develop a full quality control testing protocol. And for finish my presentation, I would like to invite everyone. We are planning a conference on the iron sulfate bearing reaction, an international conference that will be done in 20, 2024. 